Yeah. Sorry. This is the best I could do. How could you possibly find the inventor of the wheelie? I mean, it's like finding the inventor of graffiti, the inventor of the hug. It seems impossible. But then you realize the story of the wheelie is a story of technology, and it doesn't seem so impossible to find the inventor anymore. Because I did it. We need to make a timeline. We good? Yeah? Our definition is going to be specific. A wheelie requires the front wheel lifted and sustained forward progression of the bicycle. I know I did wheelies when I was like nine, so I'm gonna make that the end of the timeline. Well, actually, you know what? I will look it up in the Oxford English Dictionary. Wheelie. I think there is no way that that is when the wheelie was invented, but we'll have a bit of a narrower range on our timeline. This is Grog, he's a caveman. Uh, but honestly, I think the wheelie was invented more recently than 40,000 years ago. Let's go ahead and say that the wheel itself was invented around 6,000 years ago. We still have this roughly 6,000 year range, but the good news is we don't have to canvas 6,000 years of history. Because as you can see, the wheelie is really a technological problem and we need bikes that could do wheelies. I'm gonna put a little ellipses here. It's not until the 1800s that you even had what were called walking machines, which are basically like a balance bike without the pedals on. Some people would credit Baron Carl von Dreis with this around 1817. So see, already we've narrowed it from 1817 to 1966. But remember our definition of the wheelie. One wheel up, sustained progression forward. You can't go forward in this because there's no way to propel yourself forward once one wheel is in the air. Then you get to velocipedes in the 1860s. These things look nice, they often have pedals, but the tires are hard. They were often called bone shakers. But you don't have to read this book to see the wheelie problem. I love this one, but see where the pedals are? They're on the front wheel. You could jerk up the front wheel, but you would be pedaling air. You are missing that forward propulsion of the wheelie. So already we've narrowed this gap down to about 106 years in which the wheelie could have been invented. You get to the penny farthing in the 1870s. You've seen these kind of goofy bikes. Let me show you a demo. I uh, actually got some new technology recently. Be right back. Program activated. Okay, awesome. So the penny farthing is great, right? It's got the big wheel and the little wheel. You have to actually kind of jump up to get on the seat. Sort of hard to use. But there's a reason that they made them this way. The penny is big because it's the best way to go fast without gears. Bigger wheels, bigger speed. People race them, they become a huge fad, and people get weird on them. Look at this guy. He's a fun one. You still can't wheelie on this thing, not at least in the direction that we're talking about. You would have no forward propulsion because the pedals are on the front wheel and you would probably fall. You did have people tiptoeing toward innovation. Look at this ride down the Capitol steps in 1884. I'm gonna confess, I thought that it was a backward penny farthing, but then I stumbled on this blog post that showed it was actually a special, slightly more logical bicycle, a step toward the thing that would come next. But I still think that we aren't quite in wheelie territory. Let's go back to the timeline. Skip forward to the 1880s. You've got the safety bicycle. The safety bicycle, the bicycle we know and love, it becomes mainstream. The penny farthing is sort of big in this small window of time here, between the 1870s and the 1880s. Pneumatic tires show up in 1887. That's a big deal too, because suddenly you have safety bikes that are easy to ride. There's a whole social revolution that gets started. I'm actually gonna change this from 1966 to 1900. I'm gonna put 1966 over here because I think it's clear that sometime the technology was there and the will was there to invent the wheelie. Um, let me show you what it's really like. Okay, it did not take long to find one of these. They are akin to ride-sharing scooters in that bikes are accessible, mobile, and they make it easier to get around than ever before. 
back to the timeline. Races became even more popular, but moreover, there was a big cultural effect. Women started bicycling much, much more, which was a whole phenomenon. Fashion changed for men and women. By 1897, I'll sneak that in right here, Puck was making jokes about the craze, saying that hell would be renovated to be bad for bikes, and Cupid would ditch his arrow to run over people. But for our purposes, we suddenly have a really narrow range right here, where the wheelie could have been invented, but it hadn't been invented yet because the technology wasn't there yet. We know the time period where we're looking. We just need to find the person. Okay, so if we can find a mention of the wheelie in this range, 1880s to the real early 1890s, then we've got a chance at finding the inventor of the wheelie. We have a head start. In the 1880s, there were groups of trick-riding, penny-farthing pros. This 1891 sheet music depicts their stunts. Here's that one weird bicycle again. Here's a guy who is pretending to sleep. I don't know why he's doing that. And then there's this picture. Canary at his tricks. Dan J. Canary, DJ Canary, Daniel J. Canary starts showing up in the 1880s. In 1884, he's 20 and he's called the Professor from Connecticut. He lifted the rear wheel on his penny farthing. He's doing wheelies just in the wrong direction. He's also doing stuff like this, which makes me feel a little uncomfortable. By 1889, he is full on the wizard of the wheel doing lots of shows. And that's the same year that the Victor safety bicycle is really mainstream. In 1890, he's riding down the stairs of the Capitol too. But in the 1880s, he makes a big decision. He adopts the safety. The greatest penny farthing stunt artist in the world has a new tool and he's ready to use it. And then in 1890, the League of American Wheelmen published a handbook filled with safety bicycles and penny farthings in preparation for a big meet in Niagara Falls. At that very LAW meet, the League of American Wheelmen, Dan Canary performed the feat, then regarded as impossible, of riding on the rear wheel with the front wheel elevated. Mr. Canary believes that he was the first rider to perform the feat. A lifted front wheel and sustained forward progression. In 1891, there was another report. He's taking the front wheel off a safety bike, remember, our normal bike, and riding on one wheel down a flight of stairs. It's basically a wheelie, except he just took off the front wheel. And here is another mention. His bicycle carried him off on the back wheel like a horse dancing around on its hind legs. Canary says that he's the first to do it, and I would dismiss it as bragging or showmanship, but look at the timeline and look at the multiple reports that describe the same exact thing. So I get it. You might say, Phil, I just Googled this. Everybody knows that Dan Canary invented the wheelie. Well, that Google snippet is summarizing syndication of an article that I wrote 10 years ago. The Wikipedia page, it cites the same newspaper articles that I've shown you here, but only because the Wikipedia editor scrubbed my site and said that I wasn't notable enough of a source. I don't hate him, but it does make me a little mad. The bigger question is, why do I still care 10 years later about the story behind the wheelie? The dumb reasons. Um, I have the emotional maturity of an 11 year old and I think that everybody should know about Daniel J. Canary. He is awesome, there should be a movie about him, immediately. He's getting in crazy fights through the 1890s. He bought a house in Florida without even seeing it, which is just kind of a cool move. And I am not saying that Tony Hawk should have his mind blown by the fact that there was another bird named stunt pioneer a hundred years before him. But uh, you know, he should know. I would like him to like be able to look at his phone and be like, huh, weird. That's all I'm asking. Of course, there is a deeper side too. All of these pictures show the unique way that technology and human expression have interacted throughout history. Technology improving enabled something like the wheelie. And in turn, 
there is something irrepressibly human about a wheelie that the inventor of the safety bicycle never could have predicted. The wheelie is a great depiction of our relationship to technology because it shapes us, but we also infuse it with our humanity, no matter how foreign or high tech it might seem at the time. In 1911, cyclists of old turned back the clock at a reunion in Chicago. It was a bunch of old timey bike riders getting back, trying it again. Many of them had lost the knack, but Dan Canary, he was there and he was able to repeat some of his old stunts. All right, thank you, Willie fans out there for watching this video. If you haven't been here before, this is a channel where I post videos. I'm explaining YouTube to you now, I guess. Um, this Willie story really has been an obsession of mine for like 10 years. So I'm so glad to get to uh, tell the story again, uh, a little more depth, a little more research. I've got links in the description. And um, yeah, I really would like Tony Hawk to just find out about this. You know, I, I, I'm not saying he needs to have his mind blown or be impressed. I'm just saying he should look at his phone and be like, oh, weird. That's, that's all I'm looking for. So, you know, if we, if we can get this to him, that would be awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you again for watching. I will have a reaction video uh, to this one up on Patreon. Also kind of chat and put updates there. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching and I will see you in the next one. All right, bye.